Well, this radio cassette is over 40 years old, so I have given it a bit of a clean up, but I still think it uh, needs a bit of retro brighting going on here, which I'll uh, attempt much later on. Anyway, I want to test it first, see if it still works. And let's try the radio out. Yes, that works. Change the levels, medium wave, low wave, FM. Right, see if we can tune another station. Okay. Oh, hang on a second. It is not going any further down the line there. It seems to stuck on something there. So I need to get that fixed. And doesn't look like the power lights on either. There should be more LED lights, so I'll try and get that fixed as well. Try the volume levels, it's a stereo system, so you've got a left and right controller here. Yeah, and the left and right speakers seem to be working absolutely fine. Now let's try the tape. I press play. And it's humming away doesn't look like it's spinning okay let's try rewind yeah still the same so there is power going to it. it is trying to do something but there's nothing spinning so imagine that's the uh the belt that's gone on that so we'll get a replacement belt for this and get that swapped over but all the mechanisms still seem to be working as they should Well, it's time to get this interstate ready cassette player working again. This particular one I've owned from new all the way back from 1981. And it served me well back in the day. And it's been put in storage for many decades now. And the last time it probably used was around 40 years ago. And as I did a test earlier on, you'll notice there's a few problems with it. So let's see if we can get this put back now this is no way a tutorial of any kind uh, this is probably one of the first times I've taken a look at uh, a system like this so uh, let's see how I get on with it now the first thing I did notice actually and I didn't mention it on in the video earlier on is that the aerial <laughs> is a bit loose so that's a really simple fix so let's just get that done first of all Let's just see there's just a screw that needs tightening up. A little bit seized up. That's better. Let's still move it around now. But it's not flopping down anymore. I'll just give it a slight little bit more. There you go, that's better. Right. Okay. That's back to normal. Okay. Right, let's get this opened up. Now, the funny thing is with this, is that I've Googled this to see if there are any other Instastate tape recorders out there that I can take a look at. And there is absolutely nothing at all on the web about this system. So I have no idea what I'm about to look at. Let's 
screws in here as well. Okay, looking at this. I have a feeling the belt is going to be underneath the unit. So I'm going to have to try and get to that somehow, which means probably removing this part here to release the cassette cartridge. And this is the bit that seemed to fail as well. So let's try and see if we can move that freely now the back is off. Yeah, that seems a lot better. So that could be getting trapped. And the cover is on. And there's the LED light as well. It's slightly out of place actually, so it might still be working. I've decided to completely reset the slider. Right, imagine this just clips back in. There's little grooves there actually. That's a, and also I've connected the power lead up as well, so we can give this a, a quick test. There you go. That's better. And then that sits. top there and then it will move across as it should so hopefully that problem is solved okay Okay, let's disconnect the power.
Okay, let's try and work out this tape cassette player. Now, I think I do need to give it a good clean. I didn't mention I'll probably have to clean the heads up anyway. Um, but it's covered in muck, it's covered in dirt. And I imagine the belt is underneath this unit here. But if I press play, that mechanical cog goes down. So move it across down there. And if that moves around, that will spin the spindle that turns the cassette, which seems to be working absolutely fine. Stop the tape. Yep, that's free. So that's where the belt goes. It's got to be connected to that underneath the unit. If I rewind the tape, that moves the cog across. See that move across then? Move across. Again, that in turn will rewind the tape. I'm pretty sure if you press forward, it moves across to that cog to forward the tape. Okay. So I'm pretty convinced it's just going to be one belt for this. As I've seen a few cassette players have got two or three different belts attached to it. So it looks like it's just going to be the one belt to it. But before I go any further, let's try and give that a bit of a clean up. And I've got some IPA. A few cotton buds. Let's just pour a bit out just to keep it tidy so don't spill any from the bottle. Move that completely away. In fact, we'll do that. I've got an air duster here as well, so it might be worth some of this remaining dust. Off the unit, oh look at that.
Well, at least that's given the heads a good clean up as well. Right, now on to the next job. I think I want to now tackle the LED light here because I did notice when we did a test earlier on, the power light did not come on. Uh, so I do want to try and see what is wrong with this and uh, see if we can get this corrected. I do have uh, some spare LED lights if we do need to replace it. Um, but before I do that, I just want to test this LED light out just to make sure it is not dead and it's still live because if it is still live, we might need to rethink this. Now to test it, I just need my multimeter and I just need to turn it around to the diode setting like that. And all I need to do is just connect the positive and the negative up to the multimeter and the LED light should come on. Um, if it doesn't come on, well, we know the LED light needs to be replaced. Apologies if my hands are going to get in the way here, but I just need to connect the minus negative and the positive. And we have got the LED light working. It is it is on. Now it's off. Connect it up again. On, off. So there you are. The LED light is perfectly fine. So thinking about it, without doing further tests, maybe I'm totally wrong and that this LED light isn't a power light. Maybe it's a light that comes on when you've got um, an FM radio station tuned in. Or maybe even it comes on when you press the record button on the tape player. Um, I can't remember exactly what that light was for. I don't know why I had it in my head that it's a power lead. Um, but as I said, it, I could be wrong now. I think it could be connected to either the FM radio or the record button on the stereo. It was probably in the right position anyway, so I can make sure that is pointing to the hole on the uh, frame. It should be pointing around there. You should be able to see the light come through. Right, that mystery is now solved. We now know there's no issue with the LED light. Right, now to move on. Okay, just a, a few screws to remove. And I will speed the uh, video up a little bit here just to uh, move things along. Right, I do need to get to the bottom of this now, uh, but I've got to be careful of these wires here because they are all joined to the cassette cartridge to the motherboard and they are not uh, socketed so uh, unless I desolder some of these uh, components it's going to be quite tricky to remove this cartridge in full so I'm going to see how far I can lift it see if I can work out a way to get to the bottom of it without completely removing it And I think I need to work on this from the other way around. So let's turn the uh, radio cassette player around.
Right, it looks like the belt goes round this part here, which is what controls the uh, tape mechanism above. And then there's a, another cog down here. So we need to get a belt to connect them both together. And you can see where the old belt used to be. And to fit the belt, I think I need to move this bottom plate here. Now let's move the camera just a little bit closer. Yeah, I might get away with just moving the uh, top screw and sliding it around. See if that works. It's going to be quite tight to get to it. And you can pretty much see actually where the old belt used to be. Not much of it left, completely perished and uh, sort of melted away. I think when the compound changes over the years and it starts to perish, it becomes more liquidified and just melts. You can see all the bits coming off. I guess it's all got to come off, so I have to clean it up a little bit before I replace the belt. But what I will do, I will speed the video up because this is going to take a little while. That's looking a little bit better. Right, now it's time to replace my belt. I've got a few spare belts and I've picked out one that should be the right size. I'm going to just take my time with this, with this uh, line in this position. I try and balance everything at the same time and I'll Attentively place about round the small cog first, trying to hold it in position. And I get a, a tool, a set of tweezers, just to help me place it round the larger cog. Now I do have to lift the cog up a little bit just to get it underneath that plate. That's it, and it's going round and just slowly wind it round and hope it stays on. Yep, that looks good to me. And it's turning absolutely fine. It's not slipping. It's not too tight. Not too loose. Yeah, I'm happy with that. 
Also, I've just noticed there's a second band for this. I thought there was only going to be one, but I think there's two because uh, there's this cog, which is just below the uh, motor, I believe. So there's got to be a way of connecting that up to the uh, main part as well. And we just give this a very quick uh, clean up as well. I think we just move this plate across the other side just to give us a bit more room to be able to connect up this uh, second belt. That all seems nice and snug. And what I'll do is uh, quickly uh, bolt this back in to keep it secure and I'll uh, plug it in, connect it up and uh, do a very quick test to see if the uh, belts are working. We press play and that uh, seems to be working. The spindle is moving in a quick way. Let's stop that and let's rewind and press forward again. Hang on, wrong button. And that should set the other spindle off moving if you forward it. It does. Fantastic. Now it's time to speed things up and put it all back together again.
let's give it a whirl. I say, put the aerial back on again. The radio. Let me just test the uh, yeah, sidebar. And it now goes all directions without being blocked. So I'll keep it on low wave so it doesn't pick anything up. That's much better. I don't really want to keep radio playing too long because YouTube will probably kick up all the uh, tunes. <laughs> Five climate. And we give a very quick test out to the uh, tape recorder. Um, we'll open it up actually and we'll press the play button and we we'll see the spindle turning and we'll fast forward it. And we hit the rewind. I haven't really got any music cassettes to hand to try this out because all my cassettes are games really for these at Spectrum and things like that. So it's all uh, software tapes that I've got. Okay, what I'm going to do is test the tape out. And I'll load a game onto the Spectrum using the mister. So what I'll do, the mister is just behind there. I've got it all powered up to the loading system. I'll plug it into the side of the cassette player. Now we'll go and load a game. I'll put the cassette in the player. And we'll press play. Oh, I'm going to turn the volumes up a little bit. Let me sound levels up. And there you go, all working absolutely fine. Well, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll be back very soon. Take care. Goodbye. Okay, this is where I need your help. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, or at least got something out of it, then please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel and maybe even leave us a comment. It all helps to keep this channel going. And remember, it's all just a bit of fun. And don't forget to check out our other videos.